Welcome, my name is Shei Idagede and this is the Tech Journey series. Here we share exciting stories of Africans doing incredible things in the tech space, yes? And of course, show you how you too can do incredible things. Welcome. With me today, I have a very special guest. He is Adebo Wali Debo Falode. He is a data analyst at Fair Money. Welcome, Debo. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yeah, you're practicing this intro. Eh? Uh, it was supposed to be longer than this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's just go straight to it then. You know, when we were children, mm. back then, the questions that visitors asked is, um, well, it is your position in school, but um, let's forget that one. The other one is, what do you want to become when you grow up? So what was your answer? So across different age groups, I had like different things I wanted to become. Okay. Um, when I was, I think, pre-10, I, I wanted to be a medical doctor. Oh, okay. And everybody. Check, check, check. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think down to GS2, that was what I wanted to become. And in GS3, I was confused. Okay. I, be, I was confused between being a lawyer and being a doctor. I don't know, for some weird reason, I started arguing a lot in that, in that age group. So I was like, I think I can be a good lawyer. <laughs> I mean, I was always losing my arguments, but I still feel like <laughs> I could be a good lawyer. And then, I think down to SS3, I still felt like I wanted to be a doctor. Hmm. Then, I don't know. But how do you manage doctor? That's like arts mm -hmm. class and science class. Yeah, no, no. I, I still felt like I wanted to. So down to, no, I just, I left it. I, I, I joined science and then by the time I was done SS3, I was now torn between two. Okay. I wanted to... So for jam, I chose both medicine and computer science. Interesting. Yes, they need to work out because I mean, subject combination. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have anybody to advise me. Subject okay. combinations were, it didn't work out for uh -huh. me. It didn't work out for me. So afterwards, um, my mom had a friend in Ghana. Okay. Um, and then she spoke to them and like, ah, my son must study information technology. So at that time, I set my mind on it. So. While I was doing jam, I realized I didn't want to do medicine. Mm -hmm. It was weird, right? But I just felt like I didn't want to do medicine. I wanted to do something IT related. And when I was growing up, my mom had bought computers for us. So oh. I would play games, me and my guys. My guys still had games, so we'll buy video games, we'll play games. I just felt like this could be really cool. And I had uncles that were, um, I had an uncle that was a system analyst. I don't know, Sweet. Like a computer engineer. You had good role models. I don't know if I'll call them. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, they were in that room, space. And they just thought, uh, you know what? I, I thought this, this would be bad. I mean, I like computers. What's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. And I went to uni, school in Ghana, and then I came back. Hmm. Yeah, I came back and I wasn't sure what I wanted to become. So I was done with school. My, I, I enjoyed programming a lot when I was in school, but I didn't want to be a programmer. So I started again. I came back from Ghana. I was like, my mom and everybody, there was a lot of pressure, like, uh, you have to do something. All my guys in school thought I was going to end up as a programmer. They were like, this guy, nah, come on. Because I'll take tutorials in school. I never used to read for any programming exam. It's the tool I'm teaching that I used to use to, like, just, you know, yeah, get the knowledge. I'll read ahead of the class, like, download books on, even during the holidays, I'm learning programming languages. Wow. And then, I don't know what just happened. I just lost interest. I just felt like, look, I like the idea of being able to like think logically right mm -hmm. but i don't want to do don't. coding but i didn't have anyone to like just put me in the right direction because everybody i knew it felt like the entire ecosystem was you would do the analysis like when i say that like systems analysis and then be a programmer like okay the, like there was no role there for you to be like i didn't know about maybe in quote the business analyst part the person who would sort of like get requirements and whatnot so when, when i finished even I went, uh, my uncle called me now, like, oh, come on, be working with me just before um, we go into university, um, before you go to the NYC. NYC. So I finished in July, and then NYC was to start, the camp started in May. So around August, you're like, oh, since you're not going to do your NYC till next year. next year, why don't you just come down and be working with me? I'm like, okay, I didn't know what to <laughs> We went there. I mean, these guys are using Excel to do analysis. They're just doing data analysis on Excel and everything. Mm -hmm. And they had an external consultant that used to come around to help them with SQL. Okay. So I would work with him because it felt like I was the person who was grasping the what? Excel the fastest. So me and then like my manager as well as the um, consultants would work together because it felt like 
amongst the other guys that we came in at the same time, I was mm-hmm. like the fastest person. I just understand how to write the Excel formula and Excel functions. I just thought, you know, this, I'm just doing this now. I don't know what I want to still do. And then when I started speaking with the guy, the guy um, was working with MTN at that time. He was a business uh, business intelligence consultant. Sweet, see the name. <laughs> I was like, wow, this your role is really cool. Like, I like what you are doing. I won't lie to you. I told him I like what you are doing. Like, writing. Like, you know what the business problem is. Nobody tells you how to solve it. You are just thinking about what query do I have to write? How do I have to motivate? And you know the end, which is how programming is. You know what the end goal is. You mm-hmm. just don't know how you are going to get, get there. there. So everybody, every single programmer will probably have their own different ways to get to the same solution. And mm-hmm. It brought back that law that I had for programming, which was that was the fundamental law. And I started speaking to the guy, like, how did you get into this field? I mean, he was also working for MTN. There is no tech person that you talk to when they are finishing, you don't want to work with the telecom. Of course. So I spoke to him, and then the guy told me he studied English. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, what? Like, I'm like, no, he said, yeah, like he studied English in university. I'm like, sorry, hold on. How did you move from, from English, English to. to- this is, a, this is a tech field. This is my field, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest. And he told me, he, he first said money was the driver. Of course, for many of us. Exactly. Money was his driver. And then he took um, Oracle exams. That was what prompted me to be taking the exams during NYC. Oh, now so, I see. Yeah, so form of fact, and I served together. Yeah. <laughs> So that prompted me to be like once once I heard about it, I was like, okay, what do I have to do? Um, I really like this. Mm-hmm. And then I how do you move into yeah. it full time? He told me oh, he wrote the exam. Like how did you he said he just read and everything that ah, I said that's it. That's it. Um, I said, okay, fine, I should be able to do this. I, that, at that point that was when I stayed, I was more interested in being like business intelligence consultant. I'll just Google it. Look at all the people are asking for, I'll see Excel. I'll see Pavi, I'll see R, I'll see Python. I'm like, ah, I can't get all of this. All of this. <laughs> all of this. Yes, well, it's I mean, overwhelming. I, exactly, but I have to start from, from somewhere. So I really took like my Oracle certification really seriously. And during um, NYC, I'm sure you remember every Saturday. I would, yeah, you're always traveling to Oracle. Five hours every Saturday, I would go and then I would come back just to take the class and then make sure I was able to take once NYC was when I took the exam. Now, I would say that is how I like that. That skill brought me into like that the knowledge of Oracle databases, mm-hmm. queries, and whatnot brought me into into the field. Um, afterwards, one of my friends told me that there was a business intelligence graduate intern who his salary was peanuts. I he barely covered my my transport fare mm-hmm. at that time. Like I would have I, I had to be using red buses to stand because I knew that if I if I enter a BRT, the blue board, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it didn't cover my transport. Wow. But I was dedicated and this is what I wanted to do. So I went there, stayed there for five, six months, and then I got my first big break, basically. Finally! <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah. So how has it been? You know, has it been worth it? Every single step of the way has been worth it. I, I, and I think what is most satisfying for me is how early I started. Okay. Because, I mean, I don't take myself to be, like, in quotes, the brightest person or, like, the fastest. But you graduated with a first class now, please. (laughs) No, no, let's let's see. You graduated with a first class. No, no, so, I mean, there are two different, I mean, I think first class is not necessarily a test of brilliance. It's more of the grit. Okay. Because you are sort of, like, dedicated to the cause. You keep pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. So, you will know yourself. Some people are people that, they are... Like I mean, like they sponge up information like this. I have to like do more. Work. Oh yeah. So I feel like the grace I had was being able to get like understand where I wanted to go to really early, early. and have that time because right now it's like a really buzzing field. A lot of people are really interested in it. And at the time when I was trying to push for it, when I tell people, I want to, what what do you want to do? <sighs> business intelligence? Yeah, what's that? You know, so I was like asking, what, what does this mean? What's, what's that? I mean, what is this? Oh my God, how do I explain this? <laughs> so I felt like that was my grace. Like I had that time where it wasn't like really. I mean, what, it was what? getting there. I mean, in other countries in Nigeria, it was still just slowly moving from business to data analysis. Like that whole ecosystem it was still like just gradually because there were not a lot of companies that had like perfect use cases for what they wanted to use these rules for. for. It was just maybe like 
report report creation. So we need somebody to just create reports for us. But they they were not like really specialized and use cases to mm -hmm. help these roles really just blossom. So I think that's the reason I had like just start really early. But I've been working recently just about the way. Okay, so I know you've mentioned some of the tools you used and how overwhelming it was. Mm -hmm. I think one very good point I would like to highlight from what you said is you know seeing other people do these things is in love encouragement for people you know when you know where you are going to what it's like and i think that's one of the reasons for this show you know yeah. so that people can know what it's all about and you can delve in you know exactly. start somewhere exactly. you just have to start, mm -hmm. have to start. okay so for somebody that would like to start now yeah. how would you advise the person to go about it you know better now yeah. so how would you advise the person uh i mean i would say start you just need to start um I agree that now there are a lot of rules out there. They, uh, like it's like it really is a big, is a buzzword. Yeah. Data analysis, business analysis, a lot of people are talking about. But you need to start from somewhere. So start um, basic things. I would say, especially if you're going to work as a data analyst in Nigeria, you need to understand SQL. You need to start from understanding structured query languages. You just need to know how to interact with the database because, I mean, the days of Excel they are not over, but most companies are moving to a stage where you need to be able to connect with their databases. Mm -hmm. You might work in a place where the ecosystem is perfect, but for most companies that are not, you need to be able to write. So I'll say start from there. Um, try and get like some SQM, some statistics and maths, like some intro like algebra and then like understand linear mode, standard deviation and whatnot. Like those basics, you don't have to go too far. Then like basic probability. Once you have that concept, then you can decide to move into the different tools. Okay. So, um, usually, when I started, I started from Excel. Okay. And then I moved to Power BI. The reason why it was good for me to make that transition was that Power BI and Excel, like, the learning curve is not so steep. Steep. So, I started from Excel. And I always advise people to do, go through that place because Excel, you will never, Excel is not going to die anytime soon. No, it's not. So, even if you're going to use some analytical tool, there are times when you just have to go back to Excel to do one or two things. It will be bad. You know, after you. After <laughs> <laughs> you, you big one. You all the big ones and you can't uh -huh. do that really tiny stuff. So, I would say, um, I always tell people, like, start from Excel, mm -hmm. which you're able to do a number of these things because some of the things that probably I can do, you can do them in Excel as well. So start from there, you can now move into the tools. Anybody that is going to be in Nigeria, I always advise you to use Power BI, just learn Power BI, because the Microsoft um, ecosystem is so much, it, it favors more of the small and medium businesses. You start moving to other companies where they are using other specialized tools, but once you have a knowledge and a grasp of one tool, to learn the other one is not so, so difficult. So I would say that's always the route I always prescribe to people. Um, you start with SQL, then you move to um, learning algebra statistics, basic algebra statistics, and then moving to learning the hardcore tools themselves, and maybe R or Python, whichever catches your fancy, but I'll say Python. So would you advise like somebody wanting to become a data analyst to study like computer science or statistics or um, mathematics or just helps. any course? It helps, but I mean, if you look at the world, it's, there's really no difference. Um, a lot of people that I know that are developers didn't necessarily study computer science. Okay. Some people study um, electrical, electronics, those electrical <laughs> things. The ones that, if you go and check any company, yeah. you know, majority of developers do. But the main thing is that you have, you are willing to learn. True. So it doesn't matter what you studied, right? I mean, it gives you an edge if you study statistics or any course that is um, like numerical heavy. Okay. It gives you the advantage, not the problem. But these are not things that are so difficult to learn if you are dedicated to learn them. So I don't think you are at a disadvantage. I mean, the person that, that sort of like pushed me into this field, opened my mind to this field, studied English language, there is nothing mathematical in that course at all. True. And he was already doing this thing in, I think, 2015 or 2014. So, mm. so basically, you know, just being open to learning is one key thing in tech, irrespective of the role. Like, you have to just be open to learning. Yeah. So, what are some of the soft skills that are required for this role? Um, number one soft skill is curiosity. Um, as a data analyst, I mean, you say curiosity kills the cat. <laughs> data analyst, oh no, it doesn't kill anything, no. hmm. you need to know. So, I mean, somebody gives you data and then you analyze it, then you're looking at it, why is this? You ask more questions. 
you, whether you're talking with the business people or not. You can't just say, oh, we did not make profits, so, 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 or this month has been our highest grossing this month. Why? Do you understand? Why is it so? Is there something that we did? Is it an anomaly? Is there a new thing that was introduced? Like, we need to know why, because, I mean, when you know the reasons why, you can either replicate that success or mitigate if it was something that was terrible. So the first thing is that you have to be extremely curious. You can't leave it at the barest minimum and just say, bam, this is it. And when people are coming to meet you to ask you why certain things, so you say you don't understand the reasons. That's not it. The thing is has to be extremely curious. I think, to me, that's one of the biggest things. And then I think other things are um, attention to detail, which you find all, just about everywhere else. Um, but to me, curiosity is always what I always tell everyone. You need to be extremely curious. You just need to know. You need to be able to carry down to the basic. Because the main ro- the main thing for a data analysis is that once they analyze data, they're able to recommend mm-hmm. out of the analysis that they have done. I mean, there is no point giving me a report and then you... I mean, I can maybe seeing it, I can also recommend some certain things. But I need to see that you have also done some work on this field. How do I improve my profit? How do I mitigate losses, what is happening in my process, da 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 da. You just need to be extremely curious. Curiosity doesn't kill a cat in this case. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. So um now back to you. I know you're already enjoying your career journey so far. Uh, on a scale of one to ten, yes. one being the lowest, ten being the best, how would you rate your career satisfaction so far? Uh, I'll say nine. Nine. I'll say nine. Okay. I'll say nine. Why? When, when, when I think about it, I might have been very sad if I had done some other things. I mean, I honestly thank God that I ran out of medicine at the time or when I ran out. Because okay. I, mean, I don't even know why. Because, guy, I don't even really like blood. <laughs> Well, I think that's the only thing everybody then will head yeah. now. So. so I mean, it was not really open to, we were not really open to like all the other things. options. Yeah. You but know, I really like. To be I, fair. Yeah, I really like how my career has been. I mean, it, it didn't start with like a bang. Like I had like a number. Like I'll call it like my teaching period. Like my period where I was like, let me use like I was in the wilderness. I was just trying to learn. Mm-hmm, really. mm-hmm. And. I honestly don't take it for granted. When I talk to people and they're like, ah, I'm just starting up, I'm like, so now when I tell them my story, they're like, ah, is it? I'm, I'm serious. Like, I, <laughs> when I think about it sometimes, like, it makes me, like, really emotional because during that period where I was collecting money that could barely call my transport, I had my aunt come to me, like, oh, she has a role for me. I do the different things, like, over 100 kids that I'm like, ah, I don't, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't, like, it, like the temptation was in front of me, it was like it was a matter of follow what you really we want, want to, to do, do or, or just, want money. More money. So I'm I'm really happy that I, I did this. I mean, there were a lot of pushbacks, and I'm sure my mom knows I'm really stubborn. I'm not stubborn, stubborn, right? But like once I have this thing that this is all I want to do, like there's not so much that you will do to me. I, I'm sure at that time she couldn't see mm-hmm. what I was seeing because it didn't make sense. Like, uh, it's not a popular uh, field. Yes, now, like, you no, know, even that time, say, we first class student, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? you? Like, I was even feeling bad too because I'm like, hey, hey. First class student, that's correct, it's wrong with you. You know, like, all those things that like, you will see in school, that uh, first <laughs> class doesn't mean anything. You know, uh, Okay, but, uh, so I'm, I'm really happy that I, I, I'm in this line and it gives, me, it gives me a lot of satisfaction. Data really makes me happy. So. Thank you so much, Debo. Like a nine, it will be nine. Yeah. I I think, I'm sure you must have learned one or two things. And if you want to become a data analyst, maybe you also be waiting it a 10. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? So thank you very much for coming. Uh, thank you for I'll me. drop his details in the description box below. So if you want to follow him, LinkedIn will be, you know, down below. You can ask some questions. He might even be your mentor. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, so, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Of course, please subscribe and let us know what your question is. And see you in my next one. Bye-bye. Bye bye.